No, I remind the House that this is the member for Riverston's maiden speech and ask the House to extend to him the conventional courtesies. I call the member for Riverston. Yeah. Yeah. Mr Acting Speaker, I rise today for the first time to address this, the 55th Parliament of New South Wales, conscious of the great privilege and the great responsibility bestowed on me by the people of the Riverston electorate. It's wonderful to stand here as a member of the government led by Barry O'Farrell and Andrew Stoner. The trust placed in me is humbling. The challenges ahead are daunting and the opportunity to do good is exciting. As I stand here, I thank God for the talents he has given me, for the upbringing and education which have allowed me to develop those talents and for the opportunities which he has presented to me throughout my life to this point. Firstly, may I reflect on the wonderful thing which is democracy in New South Wales and Australia. We are so blessed to live in a country, in a time and a place in which we enjoy peace, freedom and stability. We live in a state where the views of citizens can find their expression in this place and where we're all afforded the benefits of the rule of law, freedom of association, of religion, freedom of speech and the opportunity to lead our own lives according to our own vision. These blessings have largely been inherited rather than earned. We owe so much to so many generations who went before us. We owe more than we generally recognise to our Christian heritage, from which the moral basis of our law and our culture have evolved, and which has driven much of the enlightened and compassionate reform of Western societies. We owe a great deal too to the British heritage which spawned the institutions and constitutional arrangements in which our freedom has prospered. We owe an enormous debt to those who have fought for this country to protect those freedoms. I note that today this House acknowledged the ultimate sacrifice made by Sergeant Brett Wood on behalf of our country earlier this week. We also owe a great deal to those many good men and women over generations who have served in our parliaments, courts, public service and free press. Because freedom must be nurtured and supported to survive. We cannot take it for granted that our state and country will always enjoy the political freedom we now have. It is our duty to carry out our responsibilities in such a way as to pass on this blessed heritage to future generations of people in New South Wales. For these reasons, I would encourage people, especially young people, who are considering making a contribution to the political process at whatever level, to take the plunge and become involved so that our democratic system is constantly reinvigorated and refreshed. A democracy in which more people take an active part can only be better for that. Mr Acting Speaker, my working life has been spent in the worthy vocation of education. As a high school teacher, I had the privilege of helping young people discover their talents and abilities. It is, is a delight, and has been for a number of years now, to come across former students who have done well for themselves and who are making worthwhile contributions to their community. While dealing with adolescents all day can have its challenges, I can honestly say that when I moved from the classroom teaching into the back office of educational administration, I missed the interaction with the kids that I used to teach. While working for the Catholic Education Office in the Diocese of Parramatta, I was fortunate to have as colleagues an array of people of talent, principle and commitment, whose service to the children and young people in that diocese has been outstanding. From them, I learnt lessons about service, responsibility and integrity, which I trust will assist me in my new role. The founding director of the Catholic Education Office in the Diocese of Parramatta, Anne Clark, used to remind those of us who worked in Catholic education that we stood on the shoulders of giants, those who had founded the system of Catholic schools in Australia. In the same vein, I can say that I've had the privilege of working alongside giants in the schools and in the office in my time at Parramatta Catholic Education. Prior to entering Parliament, I've been fortunate enough to serve my local community as a councillor in local government. 
In this role, I've enjoyed being able to make a difference to outcomes for people in, in a hands-on and up-close manner. It has been inspiring to meet so many generous people engaged in voluntary activities, in many cases serving their local community over many, many decades. The experience of working with good-hearted local volunteers can be inspiring and enriching. But as other local councillors, Mr Acting Speaker, such as yourself, would know, there is also the reality of regular scrutiny and criticism to keep us humble. It is, of course, impossible to please all of the people all of the time. My election as member for Riverston would not have been possible without the help of my family. I couldn't be standing here today without the role played by my wife, Cathy, over many years. It's been a long journey for me, and there have been some difficult moments in that journey, and I pay tribute to the role that Cathy's played in keeping me on the straight and narrow, keeping me standing up throughout all of that. Yeah. 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 Our six children, Jessica, Joe, Patrick, Megan, Ben and Olivia, and my parents, Clary and Joan, have been an immense source of strength and support over the years that I've been engaged in that political journey, which has seen me arrive here in 2011. As I first ran for parliament in 1999, and I've been involved in federal, state and local campaigns since I joined the Liberal Party some years earlier than that, polling booths and election campaigns have been a very large part of my family's life. I cannot thank them enough for their support, enthusiasm and patience with me. In 2011, and 2010 and 2011, Pat in particular made a huge contribution to my campaign over that time and can take credit for a fair share of the 30% swing we achieved. At two years old and two months old, my little granddaughters Millie and Lexi, who are here tonight in the gallery, are a tad too young to be press ganged as booth workers, <laughs> but they've definitely helped me to remember what life's all about and have opened up to me the joys of being a grandparent. Mr Acting Speaker, I'm indebted to an enormous number of Liberal Party members, friends and supporters. There are so many people who deserve my thanks that I hesitate to mention some people and not others. But I really do have to put on the record my gratitude to Helen Russell, who is an absolute dynamo in the campaign office, Chris Winslow, Elizabeth Banks, Nathan Zampronio, Brett Sprague, Sean Fannin, Jared Jacobson, James Diaz and all of the Diaz family, Wal Smith, Judy and Bob Newland, and June and Barry Lowcock. And there were so many others, hundreds of others, who were willing, energetic and generous in their time and effort to help me complete this task and achieve the goal that I had set myself on behalf of the people of Riverston. I am so thankful to all of them for that. Special thanks need to go too to Mark Rycheck, Chris Stone and Mark Neham of the Liberal Party campaign team. I've never seen a campaign managed better. I'd also like to thank Paul Fakes, Eric and Joan Jordan, Ian Gilbertson and Rod Rose, who were so generous in their support for me in earlier campaigns. I need to acknowledge too the generous support of Mike Gallagher, Greg Smith and his family, Marie Fakara, David Clark, Chris Harcher, and many other members of the Liberal Parliamentary Party. My thanks go as well to Louise Marcus, Kerry Bartlett and Alan Cadman, who have been friends and supportive colleagues over many years. I'd like to record my gratitude for the support and trust shown to me by Peter Debnam in the 2007 campaign. In recent months, I was delighted to receive warm encouragement from a number of religious, ethnic and cultural communities represented within the Riverston electorate. I thank Yadu Singh and Jagvin de Vierk of the Indian community, Prasan Uluwishua and Lal Rank Thosh of the Sri Lankan community, Manny Villon of the Filipino Australian Cultural Centre at Schofields, Ahmed Mahmood of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community at Marsden Park, and Zahir Ahmed for his assistance. I'm looking forward to working with each of the various ethnic, religious and cultural groups within my electorate so that together we can help to make a better life for all members of the wider community. The Riverston electorate, Mr Acting Speaker, was created in 1981 and has been represented by three members prior to my election, all from the Labor Party. 
The first of these now represents the seat of Mount Druitt here in this parliament, and I did see that member up the back there, who I acknowledge in the chamber this evening. I acknowledge too the contribution made by my predecessor, John Aquilina, who retires after 30 years with widespread respect and regard within the community. I wish him well for the future. As the class of 2011 have been making their inaugural speeches, there's been something of a competition among members in praise of their electorates. I'm not going to argue either, as the previous speaker mentioned, with the member for Strathfield when he claims that people in his electorate walk faster than anywhere else. <laughs> and I'll allow the member for Blue Mountains her rhapsody over the beauty of the rugged mountain scenery in her electorate. But I do believe that in Riverston, we have a combination of heritage and youthful dynamism unmatched anywhere in the state. Throughout the electorate of Riverston, there are numerous sites at which it is possible to find evidence of the long history of the Darig people who were, lived in Western Sydney for so long before the arrival of Europeans. In the townships of Windsor and Riverston and Rouse Hill and elsewhere, we have everyday reminders of the early days of the colony of New South Wales. The town of Windsor was established in 1794 as the settlement of Green Hills. And an ancestor of mine, Thomas Gosper, was one of the pioneer settlers, albeit an involuntary one, uh, who received a land grant in the district at the time. The fine public architecture of Francis Greenway, the humble homes of the early settlers, and the industrial architecture of the Riverston Meatworks each tell their story about the early days of the district as does the Richmond Railway Line, which was built in the 1860s, linking Windsor with Sydney via the country stops at Riverston, Schofields and Quakers Hill, pretty much just as it does today. The newer suburbs of Acacia Gardens, Glenwood, Stanhope Gardens and Kellyville Ridge are dynamic places, bristling with energy and ideas, as is the Narimba Education Precinct at Quakers Hill. The question is that the member for Riverston's time be extended. All those of that opinion, please say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Since the 1980s, thousands of people have moved to these suburbs in search of a good life for themselves and their families. Elsewhere in the electorate, we have some of the most rapidly developing parts of the state, with new housing springing up in the ponds and Colby almost as we speak. As a result, the electorate has the largest number of enrolled voters of any in the state. Whichever one of the, these localities in the electorate people live in, they are proud and protective of their neck of the woods, and they expect no less of their government than communities anywhere else in the state. The rapid growth provides the context for many of the challenges facing the electorate. The timely provision of necessary infrastructure, especially in transport, is foremost among these. The lack of a rail line serving the new suburbs, the lack of an overpass at Riverston and the traffic bottlenecks throughout the district remain to be confronted. The need for new schools, a police station, extra hospital capacity and other services loom as issues for this term of parliament. I mean to be a persistent and consistent advocate for the people of Riverston in meeting these and other needs as they present themselves. And it is wonderful to see that steps are already being taken to progress the much needed North West Rail Link. A particular challenge, Mr Acting Speaker, facing people in the northern and western parts of the Riverston electorate is the risk posed by major flooding. While the Hawkesbury and Apeon River system has not experienced a major flood since 1992, we all saw in late 2010 and early this year what floods can do when Queensland, parts of northern and southern New South Wales and Victoria all experienced major downpours. Should the Hawkesbury and Apean catchment one day experience rainfall on the scale which affected South East Queensland in January this year, the devastation across Western Sydney would be immense and the risk of large scale loss of life very real. Planning to address these risks cannot be overlooked. Much of what happens in this parliament, Mr Acting Speaker, occurs on an adversarial